Crafters, Lisa here from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you could join me for another Inspiration Friday. So this week's project, I'm going to share with you a couple of the new tools that I got. So if you've been along my journey since we lost my craft room, I've been posting some um, what am I buying or some buying guides that you guys could take a look at. And so this week we're going to be using my new sublimation printer and we are going to be using my new heat press. So I hope you stay tuned. And by the way, if this is the first time stopping by my channel, thanks so much for stopping by. Make sure you click on the subscribe button and don't for forget to click that bell and YouTube should alert you each time I upload a new video. And if you're one of my faithful subscribers, thanks so much. For stopping by. In fact, I've heard from a few of you that you've used my guide on what to look for in a sublimation printer. So that's really exciting. And because of that, I thought it would be fun to share this week's project with you. So stay tuned. I'm going to get my supplies all ready to go and we are going to get making. So this week's project was actually inspired on something that I saw on my getaway that we did over spring break over in Republic, Washington. And I went into a really cute little shop and I had saw some pillow covers that had just the cutest designs on them. In fact, I'll show you a link of it right here um, as to what those look like. So that was my inspiration. So of course I got right on Amazon and I looked to see if I could find some pillowcase covers that you could supplement on. And so I was able to find these pillowcase covers. And these are really nice because these happen to be 16 by 16. They have an invisible um, zipper. So you can definitely open them right up, put your pillow in, and you know, replace it and put a different cover on um, however you want to do it. So these were really great. They came in a pack of eight. So I've been having fun putting together some designs. Um, so I'm gonna share some of those with you and I'll show you the first one I made and I was just so happy with how that turned out. So you can see the very vibrant colors there. Here's, so here's another one that I put together that I've already put into one of my pillows that I have sitting um, on my couch. So, and then one more that I've already done. And you guys can see those colors just pop. I just love doing sublimation. So you might ask me, um, which printer did you end up going with Lisa? And I decided to stay with the Epson family and I ended up going with the Workforce um, 7210. I used to have um, the 7710. It was a little bit more expensive. It had features that I really didn't need um, in a new printer. It was one that I already had. Um, and so it had, you know, scanning capabilities. It had, you could put a um, USB drive in and all those type of things. But it was one that I had used in my office. Now this one, I was just buying for sublimation. So I decided to go for it. I was going to go for one of the Econo tank ones, which definitely would have made filling ink easier. The reason why I ended up going with the Epson 7210 is the different paper sizes. So I can do letter, I can do legal, and I can even do the 11 by 17. So that was a big key for me um, when I was looking at a printer. So the other thing that I did is I um, changed to Cosmo ink. And so I'm really happy. Again, I will give you guys a close up of this. This ink is just absolutely incredible. I will put together a link. I was gonna do a, a um, YouTube tutorial on how to load it, but you know what? They've got so many great resources already. So I'll make sure I put a link out there for you guys um, to be able to load, load your ink. Cause that can be a little, little tricky, that's for sure. So. But today what I'm gonna do is I've already put together a few more designs and I've already got them printed out. Um, and so one of the questions that I had got from a viewer is, Lisa, what system or what software do you use to put your designs together? 
I have definitely used um, Cricut's Design Space. One of the things I struggle with with Cricut's Design Space is when I just want to print something, if you use that print then cut feature, you get that black line around it, which is fine if you just want a small image. But for example, this image, I wanted it to be the full page, right? So what I have been using as my software is it's called Canva. And there is a free version of Canva that you can use. And I will definitely put the links down below. Um, I do have the paid version um, and it gives you a little bit more features, but I would recommend you guys go out and take a look at it. It's got all kinds of opportunities to design. But you guys, you guys can use Word, you can use um, Publisher, anything that you can use to create a design, you can definitely do. So I've got some fun ones here. Um, it's all backwards right now, but it says, um, today only happens once, um, make it amazing. You know, so I put together some fun little designs that I'm gonna put on these um, pillow covers. So let's go ahead and just grab one of them. And I'm gonna show you step-by-step step on how to do this and how easy this is to do, okay? So I'm gonna grab one of my pillowcases and I will tell you one of the things that I was able to rescue from the fire, and this is one of my best practices, is I put together a notebook. And this notebook, I have written down all the different temperature settings for all the things that I like to supplement. Okay, so that way it's quick and easy, it's right there. Otherwise, what I found I was doing is going back to wherever I bought my supplementation blanks, which we know that you need supplementation blanks for things. I would go back to the website, try to find what it was, and I just found this is so much easier. So I rescued this from the fire. So my latest addition is pillow covers, um, 360 degrees for 80 seconds, okay? So I have got my new Tussie um, heat press, and that's the other new item I bought. I did bump up to a 15 by 15. Um, I really like um, this heat press, and that's another link I'll put down below, but I went through a whole buying guide on heat presses. And you guys, just because I bought this heat press and I bought an Epson 7210, you need to buy what's best for you. And one of the very first things I say in my buying guides is, Determine what it is you're making and then look at what the tool is that will fit your best needs. So, so let's get started um, on this project. So what I like to do um, first off is find my zipper um, and I am going to put a piece of blowout paper inside. Okay, it's really important whenever you're dealing with ink that you have a, some blowout paper. So I'm just going to slide that right in. Um, to my pillowcase, okay? I'm gonna open up my, we're just, just about heated up, okay? I've got a piece of blowout paper underneath here and I'm gonna put my pillowcase right in on there, okay? Pillowcase is definitely bigger than my heat press, but that is perfectly fine. I think that I've got a tape measure around here. Oh, I don't know what I did with my tape measure. Okay, I'm trying to do it without. So what I want to do is I want to center my design right in here. What I like to do is I like to just kind of eyeball and fold and do a little crease right there. And then I fold and I do a little crease right there. Okay. So that way I know that that intersection is going to be my center. Okay. So I am going to, and I'm going to have to stand up here, you guys. I am going to eyeball this, okay? That looks really good. Now, one thing you guys, don't forget whenever you're doing sublimation, you always want to print a mirror image or reverse image, really important. Otherwise, guess what? You're gonna have to be reading backwards on anything that's got words on it. And most of mine all have some type of word. I love positive reinforcement and those are what I've got on most of these pillowcases. So I'm gonna go ahead and engage my um, heat press. It is set for 80 seconds and I'm gonna join you right back as soon as this pillow cover is all done. Okay, my buzzer's going off. I'm going to bring up 
This is the other thing I love about this Tussie um, heat press is the minute I bring it up, it um, automatically stops that beeping sound, okay? So everything's really warm here, you guys. I'm gonna be really careful and lift this up. And ooh, life is a story. Make yours a good one. Look at that. Look how pretty that one turned out. Now, another thing I like to do um, is I like to just take the opportunity to go ahead and press around um, my pillowcase. I've got a heat press right here. Why go out and get the iron? And I just quickly go around the sides. And all I'm doing is just trying to make it look really nice, okay? Really only have to do two sides for this one. So see how easy it is to do these pillowcase covers. Now you guys, I'm gonna do one more because while we were waiting for that one to get done, I found my tape measure. So I just wanna show you, looks like I eyeballed this one pretty close, but I just wanna show you um, how I would normally measure it out, okay? So you can see most of the ink is gone on this one. That's always a good sign. You can't reuse these guys. They don't, they are not reusable. Okay, so I'm gonna unzip another one. We'll just go through these steps again. I'm gonna put the blowout in. This blowout, I'm gonna turn sideways because this print goes a different direction, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is, I just wanna show you how I normally measure it, okay? So I'm gonna put my pillowcase back in there, okay? And I know that my pillowcase is 16 by 16, okay? So I've got my tape measure, okay? And I know that this is basically the middle, okay? And I've already done my little fold on this design, okay? And so there I am there, okay? And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna measure across and I'm gonna make sure I'm in. And I'm not being exact here, you guys, but I'm getting relatively close, okay? So, except for my pillowcases are 16 by 16, Lisa, so actually eight is my middle, not nine. So let's try that just a little bit different, okay? There we go, okay? Easy as that. I'm gonna throw another piece of blow-out paper on top of it, okay? Now, I'm not using heat transfer tape on this because I'm feeling pretty safe that it's not going to move. You definitely can use heat transfer tape um, or heat-resistant tape on it if that's something that you feel like you want to do. Um, but that is how easy it is to supplement. So think about it, you guys. New grandbaby out there, right? Take a picture, put a picture on a pillow cover. What a great idea. Let me show you one other thing that I did just recently for a friend talking about ideas of what to supplement and I'll do a, a tutorial on this one. But I did this with a supplementation tile. Sorry, my ring light's gonna show up there. And this is baby stats. Did a picture of the baby on the background and put the stats on there all kinds of ideas of what we can do with sublimation. But I just thought these pillows were absolutely the cutest thing when I was on vacation and I saw them and I just knew I, that I could make some. So thanks so much for joining me for another Inspiration Friday. I'm gonna finish making all the other designs I have here and I'm gonna give you guys a close-up view of each one of them. And here are all of the pillow covers I finished putting together today. I just love how they turned out. The colors with this Cosmo ink just really pop on each one of these pillow covers. So I hope this project has inspired you to want to try out some sublimation on pillow covers. If it does, please make sure you share a picture and tag us on social media. And if you're looking for other type DIY projects, don't forget to check out my blog at funstuffcrafts.com for other DIY projects.